If you ever came across your dog ingesting rat poison, you were probably quite concerned and not sure what exactly to do. And as this is quite a difficult disease to detect early on, it is really important to understand the fundamentals behind it and exactly what you need to look out for in order to save your pet's life. So in this video, I will be explaining exactly what the clinical signs, causes, diagnosis, treatment and prevention methods for rat poison in dogs are so that you are able to better understand the disease process and that you are better equipped to take care of your dog the next time this happens. Hi everybody, my name is Dr. Pete. I'm a veterinarian from South Africa and I've seen quite a lot of cases of dogs ingesting rat poison that end up at the clinic already too late. And this is quite a sad thing to see because it's actually quite an easy disease to treat but the problem is you need to detect the signs early on because the longer you wait, the worse it becomes. Now the most common type of rat poison is anticoagulant rodenticides. Now this is a very big word that basically means the thinning of blood. And the reason why this is invented is to kill rats. And the way that the manufacturers achieve this is by making the bait smell and taste very nice. And if it attracts rats, it will most probably also attract the inquisitive nose of dogs and cats. Now, anticoagulant poison is designed to prevent blood from clotting by blocking the synthesis of vitamin K, which is needed for the normal process of blood clotting. And this will often result in spontaneous and uncontrolled bleeding. Now, dogs that ingest anticoagulant poisoning will usually not show any signs at first, but as the days go by, the anticoagulant poisoning will start eating away at these blood clotting factors and destroy them one by one. And this will result in some internal bleeding. Clinical signs to watch out for is something obvious such as a nosebleed or the vomiting of blood or bloody diarrhea. But other signs may often be much less obvious. And these will include things like bleeding, pale mucous membranes, the swelling of joints, a distended abdomen, coughing, and difficulty in breathing. Now, there are basically two different types of anticoagulant rodenticides, with the first being the first generation, such as warfarin and hydroxycomidin. Now, these are cumulative, which means that you need to ingest low doses over a long period of time before it will eventually kill the rat. Now, the second generation is much more lethal and can kill a rat with one single dose. Now, to be honest, I won't be able to pronounce all the different names for these, so I'll just pop them on the screen. And then lastly, a very common but often overlooked cause is heparin, which is actually a human drug that is used to prevent blood clot formation. Now, when you take your dog to the vet, it is really important that you provide a very clear history of what type of rat poison your dog ingested, how much he ate, how long this has been going on for, and if you've noticed any clinical signs. Your vet will then perform a full clinical examination and you may also want to test the red blood cell count and the time that it will take the dog's blood to clot. You may also opt to take x-rays or perform an abdominal ultrasound to look for any signs of internal bleeding in the chest or the abdomen. Now if your dog ingested the rat poison within the last four hours, your vet may try to make the dog vomit it will try and pump his stomach and also administer activated charcoal to bind the toxins. But if this happened more than four hours ago or the dog already started showing clinical signs, then this will not really be of much use because most of the toxins will already have been absorbed. Your dog will then need to be put on a drip to receive intravenous fluid therapy and depending on what the red blood cell count was and the clotting times, he may also need to receive a blood transfusion as well as oxygen supplementation. In either of these cases, your dog will also need to be started on vitamin K therapy. Now this can either be by means of injections or oral meds, and this can continue for up to six weeks after your dog recovered. And ideally, you would want to take your dog back to the vet three days after the last vitamin K tablet in order to retest the blood clotting times to see if the blood clotting factors have recovered to a normal level. And what can also happen is when there's severe internal bleeding into the chest cavity, your vet may also opt to perform a procedure that we call thoracocentesis, where they basically insert a needle into the chest cavity and withdraw all the excess blood to try and lift that burden of the lungs 
to make the chest cavity expand a bit better and to make the dog breathe more easily. Now during the early stages of recovery at home, it's really important to try and keep your dog in a very small area to prevent unnecessary injuries from jumping or playing. It is also a good idea to give the vitamin K tablet with a fatty meal as this will increase its chances of absorption. Now the best treatment is obviously prevention. So make sure to keep all the mice and rat bait and any other human medication for that matter out of your dog's reach. Try and use alternatives to rat poison such as rat traps and if you really do need to use rat poison make sure it is secluded in a proper rat bait trap and do not let it lie exposed in the open. And if none of this works then rather get a professional pest control company to sort out your rodent problem. Now even if you have the slightest suspicion that your dog ingested rat poison or that you start noticing any of the previously mentioned signs then rather take him to the veterinarian earlier rather than later before your pet's health becomes critical. Also keep in mind that dogs and cats that goes outside are at much higher risk of ingesting rat poison as you may not have rat poison in your yard but if they jump over the fence and they go into your neighbor's yard or kick over the trash can or just go in the alleyway they may ingest this accidentally. Also dogs that engage in the hunting and killing of rats may also be at risk although they need to ingest quite a substantial amount of rats in order to be poisoned. Keep in mind that even if you live in an area where mice and rats are not a problem, rodent poison can also be used for other types of creatures such as raccoons, opossums and squirrels. Thank you for watching this video. Let me know down in the comments if your dog ever ingested rat poison and what you and your vet did to help him. Now, if you found this video to be helpful, I would really appreciate it if you can leave a like, share it with your friends and your family and if you are new to my channel, consider subscribing so I'll be posting new videos on interesting pet related topics every week. And as always, have a lucky day and I'll see you in another video next week. Cheers!